Hello all, today we'll be discussing when to apply feature scaling and we'll also try to understand what are the different kinds of feature scaling that we basically use, okay? So to begin with, when do we apply feature scaling? We need to understand that. Suppose let me consider that, what is exactly feature scaling? Always remember in any use case, suppose I have some features like F1, F2, F3, F4. Suppose F1, you, uh, F1 feature is basically all the units, all the values are basically calculated with the help of kgs. And this is basically collected with the help of centimeters. This is with the help of grams and some more, uh, suppose my F4 feature basically is getting calculated with the help of kilometers, right? Now suppose all these features, I'll be having all different different records, okay? And with respect to some records, I'll also be having one output feature. This is how most of the use cases will look like. Always remember any feature value that we have. Suppose if I consider feature, every feature has two important components. One is magnitude, and the other one is something called as units. So magnitude is basically the value of the feature, in a specific record, it may be 200, it may be 300, it may be 400, or it may be 50 with respect to kgs. Uh, centimeters, it may be 12 centimeters, 15 centimeters, 20 centimeters. Now, if I take this example, the value that we basically have is basically called as magnitude, and the units is basically the way how it is basically measured. So, this in the case of this particular feature, the unit is kg. And the magnitude is just like 200, 300, 450. Now, similarly, we have feature two. Here, the feature two, the unit is centimeters, and the magnitude we basically have some values like 12, 15, 20. Now, remember, when should we perform feature scaling? Most of the machine learning algorithm works on something called as Euclidean distance, okay? or it may be Manhattan distance, or all the other types of distance formula that we basically use. But most commonly is Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance. Some of the algorithms are k-means clustering, k-nearest neighbor, um, principal component analysis, right? Now always remember that whenever this kind of algorithms are working on Euclidean distance, this magnitude may play a very important role in that case. Because suppose in this feature, I have values like 200, 300, right? And in this features, I have double digit values like 12, 13, 14. So in this case, if we consider this particular magnitude, and if we try to find out the distance, that distance will be a little bit high. When I try to find out the distance between 200 point or 300 point, that basically means that there is a distance gap of 100, so which is quite much higher when compared to this particular magnitude. So in this case, what we have to do, we have to scale down our feature. It is not necessary that in each and every algorithm we have to scale down our feature, guys. Only for those algorithms where important concepts like Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance are basically used. We'll discuss in the future light on which all algorithms scaling is a must process. Okay. And for which all algorithms scaling need not be done because they can be just solved without doing any scaling. Okay. So always remember, guys, whenever you have features with different kind of magnitudes and units, right, in a particular data use case, always remember for specific use cases of specific machine learning algorithms that we are basically using, which involves concepts like Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance, we have to perform feature scaling. There is no other way that if you don't perform feature scaling, then it is not going to solve our problem, right? Now, what is feature scaling? That basically means that we are scaling down the value, scaling down the values of all this F1, F2, F3, F4 with respect to units and magnitude in the same scale, in the same scale. Now, if I say I want to scale down all these values of F1, F2, F3, F4 between 0 to 1, or I want to scale down this value based on the standard normal distribution. Now, what is standard normal distribution? Suppose, what a, suppose my standard deviation is 1 and my mean is 0. That is what standard normal distribution does. It, it tries to change your distribution of the data in such a way where your mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1. The simple formula that is basically applied is something like this. X minus mean of X divided by standard deviation. Right? So let us just see some of the techniques, how to scale down our features. Okay. The first technique that I want to mention is something called as standards standardization. This is called, a, this is also called as standard scalar. Uh, this kind of library is basically available in scale 
right? Standard scalar is basically used, which applies the simple formula that is x minus mean divided by the standard deviation. When we apply this particular formula, automatically your distribution will be converted in such a way your mean will be zero and your standard deviation will be one. Now, most of the scenario, what this will do, this redistributes the feature with the mean is equal to zero and standard deviation is equal to one. Okay, and <clears throat> the library that we basically use from SKLearn is something called a standard scalar. Okay, now similarly, we also have some different techniques which is called as min max scalar. In, sorry, before min max scalar, there is something called as mean normalization. In mean normalization, the distribution will have, it will scale down the values between minus one to plus one with mean is equal to zero. Okay, but most of the time on when you see that standard standardization is the most useful mechanism because here, it is, it is the data is getting rescaled down based on your standard normal distribution. It is, it is just getting, you know, converted centrally distributed. If you if you know the standard deviation, basically, standard normal deviation basically has this kind of curve. If you remember, right? So this is basically centralized. Okay, and if you go ahead and see some of my playlists, I have already uploaded videos on what is standard normal distribution, what is normal distribution, and all. Things. Okay, so in mean, we basically have, uh, you know. Um, Scaling down of features between minus one to plus one with mean is equal to zero. This is what the formula gets basically gets applied. And there is another scaling technique which is called as min max scaling. Here, your scaling will come down between zero to one. Simple. Okay. Uh, mean mean scaling was minus one to plus one, and this is between, basically between zero to one. And similarly, I have something called as unit vector. This unit vector is basically used over here to produce, uh, again, this will also scale down your value between zero and one, but this is specifically used in some scenarios. Now here, uh, let us see some example. When dealing with feature with hard boundaries, this is quite useful. For example, when dealing with image data, the color can range between zero to 255. So if you want to scale down this value, um, usually we can basically use this unit vector. Uh, suppose our, our, our ranges, our color ranges range between zero to 255. I want to scale down that between zero to one at that time, I'll basically use unit vector. Okay, now the most important thing, which are the examples of algorithm with feature scaling matters. Here I have mentioned some of them. First of all, I, want, I like to mention k-means uses Euclidean distance. So I'm I have to do feature scaling in k-means. Similarly, in k-nearest neighbor, I have to do feature scaling. In principal component analysis, I have to do feature scaling. Because over here, in principal component analysis, you know that we are trying to reduce the dimension. Now, reducing the dimension involves Euclidean distance, involves uh, various concepts. Uh, of changing your uh, features into some other features, right? And similarly, in gradient descent, which also involves gradient descent like linear regression, right? Linear regression. Because in gradient descent, if, uh, you know, always remember the gradient descent curve is something like this. I want to come to this particular location. Remember that if my features are scaled down, right? Between uh, zero to one or minus one to plus one, then this theta will actually be a very small value, right? this theta calculation will become faster and we'll be able to reach this global minima point quickly. Okay. So uh, algorithm like linear regressions will be very, very, uh, it, uh, if you do scaling in that also, it will be very, very useful because your calculation very basically increases. Okay. And your calculation of gradient descent to find out the global minima point basically increases, and you can quickly find it out. Right. But there are some algorithms like uh, uh, XGBoost, Random Forest, Decision Trees. You don't have to do feature scaling, guys. So always remember, because you know that in Decision Trees, what we do, we just create nodes. We, we create nodes, we divide, and we create trees, right? And this particular nodes are based on the values condition. It may be categorical feature, it may be continuous variable. That need not worry about it, right? So it is not necessary to scale down those features. We can directly use those features and do it. And when I say decision tree, that basically means for random forest also I don't require it. For XGBoost also I don't require it. Uh, for may bias also I do, I'll not be requiring it because it will, if you do it, it'll not affect it. But again, you need not do it. I'm basically saying in that way. So uh, remember this simple points whenever uh, you want to apply feature scaling because I've seen many people they just apply feature scaling without any knowledge. In my previous example that I'd already shown you in my previous video that I'd uploaded uh, previously. Uh, that was basically about credit risk assessment. There I had used XGBoost, but I have again done in front of you the feature scaling. There was a reason why I have done it, uh, you know, in order to show you that that feature scaling was not necessary. Okay. But even though if we do feature scaling, our accuracy will be almost same because without feature scaling, I also I was getting the same accuracy. So I hope you like this particular videos, guys. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do press the bell notification icon. 
um i'll be uploading more and more videos more interesting stuff uh, as i go ahead um uh, yes uh, have a great day ahead uh, um god bless you all thank you one and all